Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a short-lived TV show called Firefly. I mean, this show just hit every fucking problem I guess you could think of. I mean, it's written and created by Josh Whedon, who we've come to know is probably a fucking asshole. And his levels of assholes. I mean, I love his work, the work he does. He might be immensely talented, but you can't be a severe asshole jerk off. So, fuck Josh Whedon and all his bullshit. Although I love a lot of his work. This fucking show went 11, see, 11 episodes and just... There's a night, it's a nightmare from beginning to end, it seems like. But I loved it. It captivated me. I think there's 14 total episodes. 11 were, like, in their package. It is a nightmare. But first, I'll talk about the actors and just the tone of the show. So it's a sci-fi show. It's like a, a space western. Uh, you know, it's set, like, uh, 2517. We've used generation ships to populate the solar system or the galaxy. And the government and politics and social class shit is done really well. There's a fun uh, theme to it, but there's a darkness to it. That There's a story that follows a, a man who was on the losing side of a war. And this western feel they put into it is kind of leads back to, I think, Josh Whedon's idea came from a book about Gettysburg. In any case, you got Nathan Fillion, Gina Torres, Alan Tudyk, oh, what is her name? Morena Bulkari, Adam Baldwin, Summer Glau. This show had such good talent. The actors, everything just feels like it fits. You have a fun show that has a little bit of a, you know, a theme that's pulling from our past. It's relatable in that sense. You can feel the fun and the tension between the characters. Everything just feels like it's, um, it should be 17 seasons in now or whatever. What was it? 2003, 2002. So what the fuck happened with the show? It starts, I think, with Josh Whedon being an asshole. I mean, maybe he's a fucking asshole. Uh, you know, I'm guessing he is. So, let's give it that. So, Josh Whedon's got Fox. They got the show. He's filming in widescreen. They're not going to fucking show it in widescreen. And he's like, what? And then he's got to do the DVDs. It just seems like, I don't know, you, you bite off your nose to spite your face type thing. Like, you have this show. Granted... I don't know. In this day and age, it's a little different. You know, so much streaming services. But this is 2002. It's, it's I'm having a hard time putting it in when The Bionic Woman was canceled, which I fucking liked, and things like that, and Heroes got fucked up, and there was a strike. So maybe it's in that time frame, and I'm not sure. But the show had such good things going for it. The actors and actresses are great. The writing is amazing. He's got this talent of making dialogue and just writing it, and it just relates to me. Maybe it's only me. There's lots of people who have different fucking likes and dislikes, but in general, I would have looked at it objectively as a really fucking good show that's gonna be a big hit. And it gets canceled. Like, after 11 episodes, they're fucking putting them out in the wrong order. They're redoing the pilot. It's too dark. It's... Holy shit. This is the first time I think I recognized who Summer Glau was. Although I did lo like the Terminator TV show. I don't know what the fuck happened to that. How do you cancel Terminator TV series? It was pretty good. Fun. I was enjoying it. In any case, we got Josh Whedon. He's got somewhat of a name. He's got Buffy and Angel. Um, I think there has to be a lot of behind-the-scenes shit. Like... I think this new revelation in the woke era goes a little too far, but you have actors and actresses backing other actors and actresses talking about how much of an asshole he is, how he runs the show. Now, 
I don't know if I would look at it. I, w- I would try to be neutral and look at it from my point of view. I'm a creator. I'm a writer. I got this uh, thing going. I got deadlines. Okay, let's make the show. Let's talk about Buffy for now. The first thing that got him that real notoriety. I understand the pressures and I understand the directors and producers and whatever who have certain attitudes. I can get it. But it feels like he went steps too far. Intimidating and being kind of like, um, you know, like, like a monster on the set. And it's just... There's only so much you can relate to. It's like, I love the band Kiss, but Gene Simmons is a fucking jerk off, right? I mean, I love the music. It's my favorite band almost. It's The music is amazing. I don't take that away from them. So with Josh Whedon, I don't take away his talent and what he did here and throughout the years. But when you look back on it and you got actresses and actresses coming out because of a recent event, maybe I'll just get to that real quick. I think there's the actor from... The Justice League movie, he played Cyborg. They had to do reshoots because of what happened with Zack Snyder. So they hired Josh Whedon to come in, and there's a big uh, uproar after everything's done. The actor comes out and says, you know, Josh Whedon treated me this way, this way. He was you know, going to the guild, and there was a person above him who was keeping things quiet. It became a, you know, an internet type thing. And there was a swell of support for him. People from the Buffy show, from people who worked with Josh Whedon and have said, what an asshole you. So, we're talking about Firefly, a great sci-fi fucking show. And you can't even call it great, right? What's the criteria? Oh, a show has to be at least two seasons. Well, it's not two seasons. Oh, so I can understand, okay, a miniseries. It was a miniseries that has... You can look at it like that. I think this show was fun the chemistry i just you can't get enough of it it's charming nathan fillion is amazing in it there's just so much going for it then they made a movie so they brought it back and in 2005 they made a movie called serenity i'll probably do a podcast on that and put that into my movie talk but but i you know and by the way i like the movie the movie is really good and maybe my bias is because i love the show it's got a huge fan uh, outpouring. It's got support. People want to bring it back. And they tried that for a long time. I just look at this as a shit show from beginning to end. I could just almost in my mind see Josh Whedon coming off Buffy and Angel and saying, oh, you know what? I got this a great idea. People loved it. And look at it. And then they're working with the guy. And they're like, well, fuck you. Because you don't know what's real and what's not. What's... Oh, did you, we, you know, we told you in the outline it's not going to be uh, widescreen, but you, you, you're filming it in widescreen. That's your fault. So now you have to put things in frame better. I don't know. I look and I do a little research on it, and it just seems, look, there's a fucking tolerance level for being good at your job and knowing what you need to do to make quality work. I get it. But you go too far, and you have fans just shitting on you now, like me, because I would just tell you to go fuck yourself if you yelled at me on the set and tried to intimidate me. Might even punch you in your face, but look, Serenity, the movie, was really good. I would probably say, you know, I I love it in a sense, but the Firefly TV series, it's 11 fucking episodes. It follows a guy who loses a war, how he goes with the um, characters. There's like nine characters who he uh, hire him to go around, and he's got to make money. There's independence. There's just so much going for it in how it expresses, you know, our frontier days and just projecting it to space. I don't even think there's faster than light travel. I mean, I think they, you know, they have engines that, you know, and they might, might allude to a certain gravity effect. Not like the the Expanse, which goes like thrust gravity and stuff like that, and spin gravity. So you got the space opera, you got uh, Frontier. It's so well done. You go back and look at it, and I bet you people 
can go back and go, what the fuck happened here? This is, uh, and you know what? You could look at it and say it's a better beginning than Buffy was. I could see Buffy's first short season and how it was on shaky ground, but you saw what was there and it, boom, it became such a big hit. This had the markings. This show had all the markings and probably even better. It's some fucking twist of fate, some nonsense bullshit. You don't know. But they brought it back for a movie, and it never, like, it's 2020 now, so, you know, what do you do with these characters? I could see them bringing something back and doing something. You know, they do that. They did a great uh, update for, um, what's a Western I love? Really fucking great show. Uh, I don't know, Timothy Oliphant is in it, and they brought it back after a while, and it, like, it was really good. So I can see them doing it well, bringing it back, but. Man, you start this show, you put out the fucking episodes in the wrong orders, people don't can't understand what the fuck is going on, you're fighting with the fucking company, it just seems so crazy, but if you're interested in a sci-fi, you probably heard about Firefly, you gotta watch it, you gotta see what the fucking deal is, it's really good, I think it's a fun fucking show that had everything going for it, and it just fucking disappeared, it's just like... You don't know sometimes, right? How it just anyway, it blows my mind. I would love to see it come back. You got this actors and actresses. But what do you do with Josh Whedon now? He's like a fucking you know, he's an asshole and it's like revealed or exposed in this day and age. It just fascinates me. You love somebody's work so much. I guess you can go with Michael Jackson or, you know, Mel Gibson. You know, their work means a lot to you. And, yeah, you can get into the psychology of what, you know, an actor means to you. Or, you know, they're fucking just people doing a job. But, I don't know. It's just, you got this guy who is a fucking monster on the set. I guess you, this is something that people keep, you know, to themselves in the industry. To a certain extent. Because as like I said earlier. I can see that mentality. Just some directors are very professional. They, they might shout or try to get their point through. There was one fucking director. And he slapped the actress or something like that. Which you can't do now. So I, I, I understand that. And I could be. Well, I could at least be understandable to going to a set. And going. You know finishing. Going wow this fucking guy is an asshole. But there's a certain level you don't do. You don't, you know, call people certain names. You don't be intimidating. You don't get people's space. And, you know, there's a body language thing, too. This all seems like he is a fucking asshole of the highest order. Is it ruining the shows? Is it ruining the reputation? I don't know. I don't like the fact that he, you know, I guess you could say... Is an important part of my growing up, and you know, some of my favorite shows and some of my favorite things are Josh Whedon's work. So there's that to this too. I'm here doing a podcast talking about Firefly, and most of it is about Josh Whedon. But the show is a sci-fi hit, in my opinion. Talking about eleven C, eleven episodes, fourteen altogether. I think if you bought the DVDs, or if they ever aired them on some fucking channel. They did a movie a couple years later because of the fan base and it was popular. I love the movie. Give it a shot. I mean, you're going to get some... I think you'll get something out of it. I think you'll see some beginnings of people's careers here. I mean, there's a lot of... A lot going for it. And it's just a shame. It's one of those, you know... You just wish that the fucking dice rolled a certain way. So, give Firefly a chance if you're interested. I know it's hard these days, and just bringing it up again is like, I'm recommending a fucking show, and it's like, what does it do for Josh Whedon, the asshole? Now, I get it, he's not a fucking murderer, or, you know, nothing's been revealed that it's, um, you know, let's even go Michael Jackson thing, where you're, have no, there's no cases improved, there's settlements out of court, but you get this idea that him and children, so it's not even that, it's just, You know, I know when I'm an asshole, and I'm an asshole sometimes on social media, and I do it for my own reasons, and 
they're justified or whatever. But when you're in the vicinity of people and you're on the set, there's a body language, there's a thing you do to women, well, people do to women or whatever, that you invade their space and you can get threatening to them. And it's done on purpose a certain way. Now, look, this is just my ramblings. Turn on the mic. I'm fucking stoned. They did a little research because, you know, I love the show. I don't know. I would say watch Firefly, but if you're somebody who just says, look, you know what? I don't care how good this stuff is. He's an asshole. I get it. I got hooked, and I love a lot of things he did before I found out he was an asshole. And that's the, you know. That's what I drew. Anyway, be well, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's hope for more progress with this pandemic thing. Let's get everything back go, going up again. And my best to you and yours. See you next time.